Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Canadian Retro. I've got another pickups video for you here. I know it's been uh, quite some time since the last one. So I know uh, things have slowed down quite a bit, but ultimately uh, there's still some good stuff to be found out there. Not a lot in the way of games, but I did find a number of different consoles and some pretty cool items. Uh, maybe not video game related, but definitely valuable and stuff I'll use to likely flip to, you know, fund the collection. Uh, the, all the stuff uh, wouldn't be affordable without it. And as you know, that's the way the thrifting game goes. So uh, what I'm going to be doing here is I'll start off with a few things that uh, I found that are not really video game related, um, but definitely good things for flipping. Uh, first thing I wanted to show you here, and I bought this for 15 bucks, and that is a Mega Mind toy from DreamWorks for uh, that movie Mega Mind. And yes, yeah, so this is a walking destru destruction bot. I'm not sure a whole lot about this. I've never really seen anything about it. I just kind of checked it out and saw it was fairly valuable. I think this goes for probably around 100 bucks um, in the way that it is box isn't like perfect or anything but ultimately uh, something that I'll be trying to flip uh, but I definitely need to find the right buyer for that because I don't know uh, how many people are that into that game or that uh, movie. The next thing here uh, another amazing find is a Star Wars Epic Duels game. Uh, this was released I can't even remember the years now but uh, it was only released for a couple of years. Um, and so this is uh, factory sealed, so it's brand new, uh, never been opened. And uh, I checked this out on eBay, and this thing can go for upwards of like 350 to 400 bucks. Uh, it has a, it's a miniatures game. You basically uh, duel, and you have some cards and things like that. Um, you know, I'm into uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and obviously I pick up those kind of related things. But if I can use that to fund either my video game or Dungeons and Dragons addiction, that would be pretty cool too. So um, that one there. Uh, let's see here. I paid. I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, sorry. I paid fifteen dollars for this as well. I think I got a couple dollars off. Uh, with a coupon, so that was pretty cool right there. Uh, moving into sort of video game related, this is the artwork of uh, Final Fantasy, so I found this, it's like a box set. I think this normally comes um, sort of in a cardboard box around everything, but I just found the books, I didn't really find the cardboard sleeve that goes around them, uh, but it's the art of Final Fantasy. Uh, so each one of these books was six dollars, although again, I used a couple dollar off kind of coupon on these. Uh, so, you know, all together we'll kind of do the math or whatever and put it up, you know, as we usually do. Um, but you have that book and then I'm trying to remember what order they go in, but this is, I think, the third book. Um, and again, you know, I paid six dollars minus whatever little bonus there, 75 cents off or something for each book. Um, and that one as well. And again, uh, these go for a pretty decent price as well. I think I could probably sell that set for um, quite a bit more. Uh, although I'm a Final Fantasy fan, I really don't have any place for uh, those books in the game room. They take up a lot of space. A Quite a while back, uh, I went in and uh, these games were, well, one was 50% off and the other one was, I think, 30% off. There was some sort of special day for, um, I guess, repeat people that they see in there all the time. So it was at Valley Village. And I went in there and they're like, hey, you're in here all the time here. Have this uh, sort of promotion or whatever. So uh, I went back the next day. These games were still sitting there. Uh, the first one here is Conquest of Camelot, The Search for the Grail. So it's a PC game from, you know, like back in the day, like Sierra. Uh, kind of game, you know, the, st the style of it, um, but yeah, so uh, I picked that up, uh, it was regularly priced at 39 so I think this is one I paid like 24 somewhere in around that range, it's an old IBM game, um, but you know, I'm putting together a retro PC, so I grabbed that, and then I also grabbed, at the same time, uh, King's Quest V, which is also an old PC game as well. Hard to say if these work yet. Like I said, I'm putting together retro PCs and stuff, uh, but this one's from uh, 1990. So 
Uh, pretty cool right there, and obviously a classic series, the King's Quest series, another Sierra game. Um, but you know, when I'm sort of setting up my PC now, I can check these out. They have the discs in them, I check that all out. If the discs even work, who knows? Uh, because there are sort of, you know, getting up there in age, uh, and some of them don't necessarily work. But uh, that was a good find. That one there, I think, ended up being like 20 bucks, because um, I got like 30% off kind of thing with that one. I'm not really sure. Can't remember exactly. Uh, it was a while ago since I picked them up. Uh, the other day, I was just going through Toys R Us with my son because um, he had a sort of gift card from Christmas. He's looking around buying Lego, things like that. And uh, I saw a, a bin of games at Toys R Us. It looks like they're getting out of the game business here in Canada. I know in the States, your Toys R Us's are either gone or coming back or whatever your position is, but uh, ours stuck around when your guys left. Uh, but what happened with that is like, um, you know, they kept going on here in Canada. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, they disappeared in the States and they still stayed here. But uh, they used to carry lots of video games and now their games are all sort of in bins um, and not really massively discounted, although they're in bins, but they're basically just clearing everything out. Uh, but this one, was, I think, was somewhat discounted. I don't know if it goes for very much, but for $5, I'm like, hey, since we're here, I'll pick it up in its uh, Scribblenauts Mega Pack on the Xbox One, which I don't even own an Xbox One. Uh, so we'll see what happens. I'm lo still looking for one in the wild kind of thing, trying to find a good deal on one. So I'm sure at some point um, I'll be able to play that, and I enjoyed Scribblenauts in the past. So that's pretty cool right there. Um, I started getting into a strange uh, knockoff system kind of run here. <laughs> uh, I don't know, something I was watching on YouTube and I just kind of wanted to try out a few different knockoff sort of systems, so I bought a few. This one I actually found in a thrift shop for eight bucks, but unfortunately uh, it does not work, uh, which kind of sucks. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's called a GB station. Uh, looks like a it looks like a Game Boy Advance type thing, but you know, an SP. But um, it just plays like NES games. Uh, I checked it all out. I charged it up, and all it does is give me a blank screen. But you can hear, see if it's probably not charged anymore since I last charged it up. But uh, um, you can kind of you can hear it something, but basically it would just light up, and the screen was completely white. So I got kind of got burned on that. I guess that's why the person donated it. They probably should have just thrown it out because it's broken, but my loss uh, on that. One that just came in today uh, is this little pocket style of thing, and I, I'll have to put the name up because I don't really remember the names of it. It's just weird, kind of AliExpress slash Wish kind of uh, style of thing, but uh, this one's here just like a, an NES emulation device. It's pretty good, actually, um, for what it is. I mean, I only paid like 10 bucks for it. Um, turn the volume down a little bit, but um, it's pretty neat. You can it has just like built-in games. You can't really add any games to it or anything, but it has a few like fr fairly classic games in there. Um, anything with a save battery, it doesn't have that kind of stuff in there. It's just that kind of emulation sort of styling to it. But um, yeah, for what it is, it's pretty neat. And um, I think it was like eleven dollars or twelve dollars shipped to my house, so. I, I wanted to see what it was all about. It's a pretty neat little system anyways. Uh, this one here I bought for my son so maybe he can uh, lay off of my retro systems because he really likes my uh, my backlit uh, Game Boy Advance SP. Um, but I'm like, you know, he's like taking it around and like, you know, we're in the car with it and stuff like that and I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I want you to use an access, you know, fairly pricey system so I bought this. Uh, one here, which is an X50 Max, has like a bigger screen. Um, you can play, oops, they just fire it up here, if I can. Oh, there we go. Uh, you can play like basically up to, I don't know, probably Game Boy Advance pretty easily on this. It claims it can do PS1 games, but I think they run a little choppy. I um, wasn't really too worried about that. Sorry about the glare on the screen there, but um, you know, I've been playing uh, the Cartridge Club Game of the Month on this, which is Fantasy Star. So <laughs> I've been enjoying it. it. Works out pretty well. Sounds pretty good. Uh, holds a charge pretty well. And I can't remember what I paid for it, but I think it was like maybe like a shipped to my house like 40 bucks or something. Um, definitely 
uh, worth it. And you, in this one, you can put an SD card in so you can actually uh, load up ROMs or whatever if you wanted to. Obviously, only only games that you own, right? So that's uh, that. Back to the uh, Goodwill kind of finds, not Goodwill, sorry, the Value Village kind of finds. That seems to be the only place that I'm really finding anything these days. Uh, I found a PS1, like legit PS1, uh, the little one. Um, it needs a cleaning. I cleaned it up a little bit just to get some of the stuff off of it, but it was $8, so I figured uh, that's definitely worth it for this. And I can also see that um, someone has sort of written a name on the back and then like a code on the back. So it looks to me like this one might have been opened up at some point and there might be a mod chip in this So I don't know that might be a future episode of me going through these systems and seeing if uh, there's a mod in them But this one might be I think um, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. But anyway, eight dollars uh, You know always nostalgic. I always like uh, was impressed sort of back in the day that they could fit a PlayStation into something You know this size uh, Which is really cool um, something I also found, this was uh, just a couple days ago, I found a Atari Jaguar <laughs> pack. There was no Atari Jaguar system around, but the uh, power supply was there, and I have a Jaguar that has no uh, power supply, so now I have a power supply for it. Um, of course, I don't even think I have any Jaguar games to play with it, but at least, you know, we're getting closer uh, to that. So there's the power supply for the Jaguar. I paid three bucks for it. Um, I think that's a good deal because a uh, pretty uncommon system to find, you know, things for. Uh, also something I bought, and this was, again, I think like five or six dollars um, because it was in a bag, is this uh, Pokemon... It's like a Jack Pacific 2007. Uh, it's like mini games kind of thing. It's kind of interesting, but uh, it works and everything. Batteries are fine and whatnot. And uh, it's a little Pokemon thing. You can kind of look at different Pokemon. You play little mini games on it. Um, I know it's definitely valued more than I spent on it. Um, <laughs> so you can kind of. So there's like little mini games and things that you can do in it. Pretty fun. Um, I checked it out for a little bit. Definitely worth the few dollars I paid for it. And likely that'll get, uh, if my son gets bored with it, I'll move it on to, you know, another, you know, at one of the video game conventions kind of thing. Uh, I also found this for $20 and that is a, a PlayStation 2 that has this funky for some reason, uh, sticker kind of thing on it, whatever you call it, uh, skin <laughs> on it of like skulls. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I paid 20 for it. I'm pretty sure I didn't have time to even get out a card to get a discount. So I'm pretty sure uh, that's what I paid for that. But I'll clean that up um, and I'll likely move that one along, um, you know, at a game show. It's got like the expansion bay cover and everything. So I just need some controllers already has a power cord, so we're pretty good um, right there uh, with that. And the last thing I got, I actually got for free. My wife got this off of a thing called Free Cycle. Uh, people give away things for free. Um, someone had posted a PlayStation 2 with a couple of games, and I was like, and she, and I think I was having a nap, and she jumped all over it. So I'm just gonna take it out of the bags that they came in, but I didn't even realize this at the time, because uh, it wasn't in the picture, but it came in the box. So that's pretty cool. Uh, it's not all complete inside the systems in there. It looks like really mint. Um, the box is in decent decent shape. Uh, there's a couple of games in there, so I will open it up, but I'm not going to take everything out, but I'll grab the games out of here. Um, it didn't come with like controllers or anything, so again, I'll be hunting those down. Uh, something that it did come with though, is the uh, multi-tap, so that was in there. Uh, some AV cords. Uh, the system's in there, I'm not gonna grab that out. But it also came with the uh, the network adapter, which uh, is a fairly sought after item these days for the modding scene. Um, it has styrofoam in it. I'm not gonna totally pull everything out, but I am gonna grab the few games that are in here. Um, oh, there is a memory card as well. I think that's everything other than the system that's in the box. 
sure you've seen a, a PS2 system before, so no big surprise there, but I didn't actually have this model of PS2 uh, box. So that's really cool, especially for free. I'm pretty pumped about that. Um, and the first one here is uh, God of War uh, 2. So a two disc set right there uh, in really great shape. And then also uh, Soul Calibur 3, which I believe is probably an upgrade for mine because I think mine might have issues. So pretty cool right there. And then, uh, yeah, and it has like both the discs and everything. And everything here is in like really stellar, amazing shape. So I'm pretty sure those are gonna be upgrades uh, for mine. And that's something that she scored for free. So good eye on her <laughs> uh, to round out this video. Uh, that's everything I got for you this time around. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do feel free to thumbs up this video, comment down below, and I'll see you all later.